Do you procrastinate because you feel like you're lazy? Or maybe you think it's because you're unorganized or you have poor time management skills or you get bored easily. Or maybe you feel like you procrastinate because you lack that discipline and that motivation that everyone else seems to have but you. Well, I've got news for you. Procrastination has nothing to do with laziness or lack of discipline or motivation. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the real reasons why people procrastinate. Hi, I'm Laura Albers. I am the Clear Your Plate coach, a mental health therapist, a master certified wellness coach with the International Association of Wellness Professionals, and owner of Albers Mind and Body Wellness. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you the three common reasons that people really procrastinate, as well as a simple fix for each of these three reasons so you can finally start to shed that procrastination that's really created this vicious cycle in your life. All right, so let's get to it. The first reason that people commonly procrastinate, again, has nothing to do with laziness. Um, it's really because they have difficulty regulating stress in their moods, okay? So if you think about procrastination, here's what usually happens. There's some kind of task or activity or event or something that you have to do, and you're not looking forward to it. In fact, often you're dreading it. And so it becomes this dreaded task that you're supposed to do, which sounds pretty awful, right? It's, you're filled with, you know, stress and disgust maybe, um, you wanna avoid at all costs. It just doesn't feel good. It feels like a very negative experience and negative emotions. And so when we feel those negative emotions, our instinct is to want to avoid that, right? Because our, we're wired to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And so simply all you're doing when you experience those perceived negative emotions is you're avoiding it, which is really, again, that's how you're wired. Um, but what happens is it does work in the short term because you do get to avoid the task in the short term. However, as you well know, that task doesn't just go away, right? You know, usually that stays on the to-do list for far too long, or maybe you even get in trouble, let's say at work because you've missed a deadline or something like that. And so long term, it really doesn't work. And then you end up usually having to do the task anyway, only now you have far less time usually to complete it. And so it just becomes this vicious cycle of avoiding the task to avoid the negative emotions and then feeling better short term, but then feeling much worse long term and then eventually having to do the task anyway, which doesn't feel as pleasant. And so it's just kind of, the, again, this vicious cycle that really doesn't work. So some common fixes, um, how you can kind of fix this. Number one is just to realize that you're not always going to feel good. You know, that part of adulting, unfortunately, is having to do tasks sometimes that we don't always enjoy. And really, the only reason we know we don't enjoy them is because, you know, there's other tasks that we do enjoy more. So the fact that um, we don't enjoy certain tasks makes it more likely for us to recognize, like we would never be able to recognize what we enjoy if we didn't also recognize what we didn't enjoy. And so, you know, it can be something where you, um, first of all, just really have some compassion and grace for yourself to say, okay, you know what, I'm not always going to feel good, but I am going to feel good when it's over. Like I am going to feel good when I'm done with this task, right? And so you want to focus more on the aftermath of how you're going to feel rather than how you feel beforehand or rather than how you feel even in the moment. You know, so how good is it going to feel later when it's done and you can cross it off your list? Um, another thing that you can implement in, with this um, type of, of challenge is to implement the five-minute rule. And with the five-minute rule, it's probably pretty self-explanatory. You can just set, simply set a timer for five minutes and say, okay, I'm going to work on this task for five minutes. And when that timer goes off, if after five minutes I'm done, then I'm done. And I can feel good. I don't have to feel guilty. I don't have to beat myself up because I did what I said I was going to do. I worked on it for five minutes. But you know what often happens is once we kind of get going, because starting is the hardest part, once we have started though, generally we, we're okay. We're, we're fine with doing a little bit more work. So you might work even an extra five more minutes or 10 more minutes or whatever the case may be. Um, and so you'll be just that much further along in making progress towards that task or that goal or activity or whatever it is. Um, so try implementing the five minute rule and just work for five minutes and, and sort of see what happens. All right, so that's number one, is difficulty regulating stress and regulating your moods as far as why we procrastinate. Reason number two is that we have, per, per, excuse me, perfectionistic or unrealistic standards. 
Okay, so often we think about procrastinators as they just don't really care. They don't really care if they get that task done or that report written or whatever it is. But that's like totally not true. In fact, it's usually the opposite. It's usually that they care too much. They have such perfectionistic standards that they basically end up procrastinating because they feel kind of like, well, if I can't do it perfectly, then why do it at all? Or another way you might see this show up is um, waiting until the last minute to, let's say, start a project at work or to write a report for work. And the reason you wait to the very last minute is so that when, you know, let's say your boss sees it um, and maybe gives you some feedback or some criticism or, you know, constructive feedback or whatever it is, um, you can sort of attribute that more to the fact that you ran out of time. And if only I'd had more time, then it could have been perfect. So it sort of takes like the pressure and the responsibility off you and puts it more on time, which really isn't fair um, because you're the one that decided to wait until the last minute to do to do the report or whatever the task is. Um, so it's, you know, having these perfectionistic or unrealistic standards really sets us up not only for really wasting a lot of our time and energy because not all tasks require that perfectionistic standard. You know, most tasks, we can adopt sort of this done is better than perfect mantra. And that's really kind of the fix for this particular challenge is to first of all, check your standards. You know, are they realistic? You know, um, or do you have double standards where you have super high expectations, almost impossible standards for yourself, but then, you know, normal, you know, realistic standards are fine for your friend or your coworker. So kind of checking your standards is, is part of this. The other thing is adopting that done is better than uh, perfect mantra, because again, as most tasks don't require perfectionism, that robs us way too much of our time and energy that could better be spent on more enjoyable or more important tasks or in more important ways. All right, so that's number two, is having perfectionistic or unrealistic standards. The third and final common reason that we're gonna talk about today in this video as to why people procrastinate is because you've tied performance to your self-worth. Okay, so this is a little bit similar to kind of one and two um, in the fact that you have this unrealistic expectations and standards for yourself, first of all, and then you tie that to your value as a human being, or to your value, to your self-worth, to your self-esteem, to sort of who you are. And so um, often because those standards are so impossible to begin with, we're usually left feeling like we're not measuring up or that we're disappointed. And again, those feelings feel, are perceived, you know, we perceive them as being negative. And so we're gonna want to avoid that as much as possible. And so that kind of goes back to number one, which is like we have difficulty regulating our, our perceived negative emotions. And so we just avoid the task altogether. And so the common fix for this is to really look at, first of all, think about um, the fact of us being human beings and not human doings, right? So that's kind of the first thing is just to kind of keep that in mind and that people connect with us because of who we are, you know, because of our friendship to them or our relationship with them. They don't connect with us because of the tasks that we're able to cross off our to-do list. Okay, and also think about at the end of your life, you know, you'll be remembered for your character and for who you are and for how you treat other people, not, again, not all of the tasks that you completed or that you were perceived as being perfect. That's not what people really connect with. People connect with vulnerability and authenticity. So kind of keep those things in mind. So I really hope that these common reasons, you know, that people procrastinate really helps you to get out of your mindset that label that you might have for yourself of I'm lazy or I'm unmotivated or simply don't care enough because that's definitely not the case. As we talked about, it's because you care too much most often. And so I hope you'll think about each of these reasons and think about which one resonates the most for you. And then, and then also really identify one of the strategies on how you're going to fix that challenge for you in your life. So I'd love to hear from you. Comment below. Um, let me know which of these um, common reasons people procrastinate really resonate with you. And um, thanks so much for watching. And for more bite-sized short videos on all things health and wellness, check out my website. It's www.alberswellness.com, where you can also get signed up for my free seven-day self-care challenge via email. All right. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye for now.